Hey there everyone, this is Jeff again with Starcat Products, here to bring you the next stage in Painkiller Hell and Damnation. Today we're going to be taking on my favorite level, the Opera House. This stage has two tarot cards in it, it's got Double Haste and Dark Soul. Their requirements are to get 100 souls from fallen enemies, and also to get all the secrets in there which we're going to do anyways. So this is the start of the stage here, there's some shotgun ammunition down on the bottom. Make sure you turn your light on, it's really really dark. The first secret's actually in the starting zone. For some reason, when you make that jump there, it seems to throw you to the left, so try to fight it when you jump it. Jump on the lockers, jump on the on the garbage bin, and jump over the fence, and you'll also find the first holy relic. you notice we have a new weapon here. I call this weapon the Electro Driver. It's really awesome, but I want, to hear you to, I want you to hear the battle theme for this stage, how this great it is. Awesome. I mean, that song is like the best in the game. Like, I love it. <clears throat> they actually play that song on the credits when uh, you beat the game. So this, about this area here, there's an armor to the left. Uh, you can't really miss it because you have to kill all the enemies anyways. Uh, the new weapon we got that I call the Electro Driver. It shoots shurikens out as the primary fire. And then the secondary fire is a lightning attack. You can combine them together to do the lightning combo, which we'll be showing later. Basically you hit about, I think it's like two or three enemies with the lightning. And then fire the primary shot, fire the Shoryukens, it actually will launch all the Shoryukens on the weapon. And lifting the enemy that was hit into the air, that electrocuted other enemies around him, is really, really strong when the enemies like to pile up on you. And when we get to the Colosseum stage and the Oriental Castle, you'll be seeing it a lot more because it's actually a really, really strong weapon on those stages. I didn't really say much about these enemies, they just run at you, they're melee. To try not to let them get to your face, the shotgun and the soul catcher are pretty strong against them in the painkiller. Nothing really crazy, just go so we're gonna go up this st stairwell here and to get to the next area. There's gonna be a couple of clearings we gotta do on the way up and down. The next secret is actually on the way back down. So this is a great this is like my favorite level from Painkiller Black. I really enjoyed this stage a lot. It had really awesome music. They actually left the original music for this stage in the survival mode when you played the survival mode for the Opera House. They actually changed a lot of the enemies on this stage. It actually was a bunch of ninjas that you fought. But then they made it like these generic biker guys. Or punk metal guys, whatever the heck they are. So that actually made the stage a lot easier because the ninja guys actually shot blow darts at you and could teleport. And there's a lot more of these samurai guys we're going to be seeing later on too that we have to fight as well. One thing to also note is that all the fire extinguishers on the wall, in the old game, you could actually blow them up. Here, they're just decorations. So I think it's kind of funny that they left a lot of the detail from the old Painkiller game, but actually just made it just decoration. Remember, whenever you get an enemy stuck on the wall like that, you can hit them with the Painkiller and get an extra gold. I kind of messed that up a little bit there, but that was a very poor example. So our next secret's actually down these stairs here. We're going to have to make a leap of faith. I'm not quite all the way there yet. I rarely use the shotgun, so I guess we can give it a shot. But right here, you see the wood right there? What you have to do is you have to jump on that just right, and then you look down, and you need to fall into like this ship head right here, and you'll get a soul catcher ammunition. So there goes. That's two of the five secrets. And we gotta go back upstairs and kill the last enemy to open the door for the clearing. One thing I always notice about Painkiller Hell and Damnation is they always close the doors on you when you get to an area. But in Painkiller Black, all the doors actually will open back up for you to where you can proceed everywhere to the level if you miss any secrets or anything. So in Painkiller Black, you don't get that option, however. So once you enter a room, like say the final room, you're stuck. And if you missed anything, well, too bad. You gotta load the checkpoint or go back to the beginning of the stage. So that's kind of a little bit of a letdown there. <clears throat> We're going to see the Electro Driver here to get rid of these guys in these battleship heads. Try to kill these guys off pretty quick because they throw bombs at you. They hurt really bad in trauma mode. You can see that did like 35 damage to me. 
So here, to try to just jump around to get the enemies to kind of gather around you. They're pretty easy because this is a pretty open room. This is a pretty long clearing. Yeah, this is the opera house, the main room. Of course, it'll be the opera house room. So this is the main clearing we're going to do here. The rest of the clearings aren't nearly as big as this. Always try to make sure you keep moving because the enemies can do some pretty serious damage to you, especially if you get hit by their projectile moves. These guys are pretty easy as long as you keep them running at you. They have a, another attack where they throw bombs, but most of the time they'll just spend their time running at you. Alright, so we're just taking these enemies out. Just a little bit of Electro Driver action there. I know the weapon is probably not called Electro Driver, but I just like calling it that. I almost want to say the Electro Driver is actually from Time Splitters, which we could maybe do talk about later on. So again, always try to bunny hop when you're playing Painkiller. There's a lot of gold that's in a lot of these containers here. It's really easy to miss it because the enemies burst out of the boxes that contain the gold. So if you're going for an all gold, a run for this stage is going to be very difficult. You might be spending, might be better off trying to play the level in like Insomnia. Just so you can take a little bit more hits. And the enemies won't hurt you as bad. That way you can get all the gold. Those fireballs you saw are for the samurai guys. This is the first time we're going to see these guys. Try to take control of them because they're really, really, really strong. And they can shoot and they can pretty much waste anything in melee. So this guy, he's going to be tearing up some face. One thing to keep in mind when using the Soul Catcher is try to jump down on the enemy and try to get them to line up. That way you'll pierce through the first one and it'll hit the one behind him. It's really useful in later stages like the train station, which you're going to be seeing next. Again, a lot of these enemies that are on this part are changed. You actually here fight like these little spider guys that we're going to be seeing in a DLC level that can duplicate themselves and make little, little grub babies. And so they're really, really, really hard. They hurt a lot, and they can jump at you. But here you get these, like, Pinocchio guys. I believe the Pinocchio guys are actually made by the new developers for Painkiller Hell and Black. So they're not actually in the original game. But again, the clearing is a lot easier because you have to fight all these stupid enemies that are just not even that hard. I tried to do the Electro Driver combo there and failed completely. We'll, we'll be seeing it later on, though. State gun is just so weak. I tried to use it for a second and it just like I killed that guy in one hit, but most of the time the grenades are just a lot better. That was really awesome though how I hit the guy with the grenade and then hit him with the stake. I think I got some extra gold for that too. So again, if you do some cool tricks in this game, you can get extra gold pretty easily. And the game kind of rewards you for showing off. So it's kind of nice. If you like showing off, like this is a pretty good game for you to play. I believe you can do it in the original game as well. Just if you kill airborne enemies, you get bonus points for it. Points being, of course, gold, because there's no points in Painkiller. <clears throat> so try to look around this room. There's a lot of boxes that have gold in them if they weren't destroyed during the clearing. And there's also a lot of ammunition you can get. So there's like a, over a thousand gold, I believe, on this level. So you're going to be getting a lot of gold. This is a great level to farm if you want to get gold. There's also some enemies we're going to be seeing later on that are pretty easy to kill with the Painkiller, where you can air juggle them. And that way you can just get some extra gold like that as well. Not just from the stage, in case you miss a lot of it from the clearing. The enemy's destroying the boxes. So unfortunately, like a lot, half, about half of this run is going to be us is getting the gold and the secrets and the ammunition that's lying around. There's a lot of hidden stuff. Always make sure to check all the corners. Always turn your light off. Like I always say in almost every video, always turn your light off to make sure you can see the ground so you can see the gold illuminate and the other power-ups. <coughs> So you go over here, there's actually a room full of boxes with gold in them. And we're going to be getting all these. There's actually a secret on the top of this room here. And another one, if you get the first secret, you can get right afterwards. So we're going to be getting most of the secrets here right away. They're all in this main opera house room as well. One thing to also note is that there's a lot of layers of floors on the opera house. In the original Painkiller Black, those areas are actually are empty. There's not really any gold or anything for you to get. But in Painkiller Hell and Damnation, they filled them up with gold for you to get. So here we're going to have some white show up on, or banshee show up on the stage here. It's kind of hard to get to the trigger. you got to back up a little bit. There we go, and it'll screech. And then two big guys will spawn. These big guys are really easy, especially if you get the Painkiller out and kill them. Oh, so I didn't even see that guy. How, did, how does a big guy like that sneak up on me? Now you get that easy to do my, my trick I always tell you guys about. You get them, and you just hit them over and over. They'll flinch, so the shotgun's pretty good if you can get them to flinch. 
They're also really, really easy to take control of with the Soul Catcher combo. But pretty much, these guys spend like most of their time just flinching. And they're really, really easy to launch airborne with the painkiller. And you get a lot of extra gold for killing them. There's a DLC stage, the train station, that has a lot of guys like that. And the guys are wearing the electro vests. And they're so easy to air juggle with the painkiller. It's ridiculous. Where you just get so much gold. I think when I first played, I got like 4,000 extra gold just from air juggling those guys. They're so easy. I tried to hit this guy out of the air to get some extra points. And I completely missed. And I still missed him after I jumped down at him. So that was pretty lackluster right there. So this level is also a lot darker than it is in its original Painkiller Black counterpart. So you're going to be spending a lot of time like <clears throat> shooting your weapons to light up the area and turning your light on and off. So this, this room is pretty much identical to the main room. Again, you fight ninjas instead of the punk guys. The ninjas shoot at you and these guys kind of just spend most of the time running at you so it's actually really, really, really easy to kill. Trying to use the shotgun, I completely miss, like almost every time I feel like when I use the shotgun. I got that guy first try though. It's always fun when I get stuck to the wall, just like I see their bodies dangle around. So yeah, this is my favorite level. The battle theme is just fantastic. I might let you guys hear it some more near the end, because for some reason there was a monster that was left over, and I couldn't find him, and he just kind of ran around for like three minutes, and I was just looking for him. Because I was locked in the last room, as I stated before, out of room's lock. So this is a pretty pretty fun stage. I really thoroughly enjoy it. It's pretty fun to play multiplayer because it's really, really big. And there's a lot of room for you guys to dodge. And the enemies are pretty tough or they're pretty challenging to fight. And those stupid skeletons, when you play multiplayer, the souls if you don't I think if you don't give the enemies like throw their bodies apart, their souls actually would turn into skeletons. It's actually really, really pain in the butt to like kill them because they always seem to take two hits. So it's almost like Rapid fire weapons would be a better idea to use because they actually would hit them more. So in this room you can get another armor, which we're probably going to need because I took a couple hits. <clears throat> There's a checkpoint, we're not going to get that just yet though. We got to get the secrets first. Alright, so there's a lot, again, there's a lot of gold on these top floors here. There's some balconies you can jump down that we'll be going down later to where we can get more gold. There's the armor. If you are hurt, there's a yellow health for you. So not a whole lot to say right now. We're just getting gold. <clears throat> so how did you all like the Steam Summer Sale? I uh, bought a good bit of stuff there. Probably going to be over by the time I post this video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys don't know what Steam is, it's a really great service that offers a lot of games such as Painkiller for discounted prices almost every day. A little, little sale there. I don't know why I did that, but let's do that in. Let's give us something to talk about. So here's the next secret. We are going to fall down onto these ledges. It's really, really easy to miss. What you need to do is stop and let their momentum actually make you fall. If you push forward, you actually will overshot it and you'll miss it. When you, once you get the holy relic on the second balcony that you land on, immediately push back and a door will open leading you to this area here and pick up the gold. As I stated before in prior videos, the gold will just splatter everywhere, and it's really, really easy to miss gold, so always make sure you turn your light on and off. For some reason in the multiplayer I was playing, and I was playing as E, which is the second player, and my light got stuck on. I couldn't turn it off, so that was pretty annoying. So you go into this door here, and you go up the stairs, and it'll give you the, the fourth secret, which is another holy relic, and you come back down here, and you can get more gold. I believe once you get open the door at the top, the second door will open. In the beta version, there's a lot of videos of people showing the secrets off, and this door actually stays open, and they just walk into it. It was threw me off a lot, because I couldn't find where the secret was, because every time I would try to go to this door, it would be closed. So I believe we're going to get the next secret pretty soon here. You go all the way across, and the, next, the last secret is on the stage. This secret is actually identical to its secret on Painkiller Black. We're going to go up here, jump onto the stage. You don't get the secret until you go into this little house thing here, this building. Get some super ammo packs, really, really useful. So there you go, we got all five of the secrets now. So that way, we can get one of the tarot cards. As you saw, I was looking, showing you the balconies. These are the ways that you get up on the next areas. 
I don't think I'm going to show you all of them because it will take way too long for me to show you all these spots. I think if you try to get all the gold and go through all the areas on this stage, it takes about like 45 minutes. We don't want to watch me just get gold the whole time. That's no fun. We want to fight enemies. We want to blow things up. So we gotta go back up here. That's the other thing. Like when you try to go get all the gold, you have to keep going up and down these stairs over and over again. They take so long. Because it actually feels like it's slower for you to bunny hop upstairs than in the original game. You just move a lot quicker, it feels like. There's a lot of graffiti on the walls. It's pretty funny. You should take a look at it if you play it yourselves. So yeah, we weren't gonna go get all the spots, but I was just showing you the balconies there. So if you wanted to go get all of them, just jump on those. So here there's more of the samurai guys. They're actually really, really, really strong in these close quarter areas. I completely failed to take control of that when I got hit them too much with the beam. So try to always take control of those samurai guys. They're really, really strong and they pretty much waste everything that they, they can get. And that's pretty much the motto of how this game works. The Soul Catcher, if there is an enemy that gives you a lot of trouble, take control of it. Because I guarantee you he'll give the in other enemies a hell of a lot more trouble than he would you. So yeah, this is, I love this level, the, the enemies are fun to fight, the music's great, the new detail on the remake is awesome, this is a really fun experience. So yep, not a whole lot to talk about again, this level's pretty long, a lot, a lot of the long hallways and not a lot happens, even the music even stopped, just to show that, oh yeah, not really doing a whole lot, but up here, the Soul Catcher combo is really, really good because the enemies are actually spawning like a star pattern. And you can gain control of a lot of them. I actually got control of like three or four of them one time, and I got a screenshot. Oh, I did get three of them. Awesome. See? It's really, really, really good here. So always use the Soul Catcher combo right there. To be, or if you don't have enough souls, use the Electro Driver combo, and you'll actually catch them all to where they'll take a lot of damage, and they'll all fall over dead pretty much instantly. Like the music will start, and it'll stop. And it'll go, and make, make the sound of the checkpoint showing up. So here we're actually going down the stairs now. So the state gun's pretty good because the projectiles can actually fall right on top of the enemies. And you can hold them back pretty good. Being on the higher ground is always advantageous. Don't be like me and shoot a grenade at point blank and get hit by it. That's pretty silly. That guy died pretty funny how I hit him in the crotch and he flipped in the air. A lot of people complain that the painkiller AI has suicidal tendencies. It just kind of runs at you. The thing is that you fight so many enemies in the game. It would be kind of crazy they had the enemies be like immensely smart and hide behind walls and honestly I find games that where you have to spend a majority of your time hiding behind cover and dealing with the cheap ass AI reaching their gun around the corner and hitting you it's just annoying so here's two more of these big guys they're really really easy because it's really big open area and all you have to fight are them they always fall down you can just pretty much destroy them instantly with the painkiller showing off a little bit juggling a little bit a lot of people ask me about the red souls. They're the souls that you get from fighting the bigger enemies. They don't appear to be any different than the regular souls. So I, I thought they gave you two, but I just looked up at the top and it actually only got one. So they just showed that you killed something big, like a mini boss or something. So here is the last room. The last room can be pretty difficult. Try to make sure your soul catcher is all the way charged up, unlike mine. I have one more charge I need to get. And so you're going to really want to gain control of a lot of the samurai guys as they spawn up in the top stairwells up there as you see. And you'll really want to make sure you gain control because it gets out of control really, really fast on trauma mode. Alright, so some of the guys have spawned. I'm going to try to gain control of them. Got them. Awesome. So the more you can gain control of the samurai guys, the lot easier time you'll have. Because you can get caught up pretty, pretty bad. Because they start up in the balconies and I think they spawn up in the corners as well that I'm at right now. And if you're not careful, you can get hit. Try not to get hit by the fireballs. They hurt a lot. Ouch. Got hit. Good thing I had a, bit, a good bit of armor on, though. Thanks. I took a ton of armor damage. Alright, slow catcher's all the way charged up again. Did I get him? Oh, I got him. It's awesome. So this is this room's going really well so far. And I think my buddy hit me with his fireball. Nice. Thanks, bud. So, as with the big clearing area, there are a lot of boxes that explode when you're fighting and you need if you're going for all the gold you need to make sure you spend a good bit of your time trying to get the gold before it disappears this is pretty hard to do when you take about 40 30 40 points of damage per fireball for these samurai guys 
I went up in, up in these stairs, actually a pretty bad idea, because I actually screwed up the spawning a little bit. I know it's really, really bad when you play a game, and you gotta make sure you don't screw the AI up. But, you know, that's how it rolls. It's still a pretty good game, though. Every game has its flaws. You know, character flaws, like they talked about in Metal Gear. Solid. So, along with the samurai guys, those big guys are really, really good to gain control of because they're such big targets. It's actually really, really, really easy to gain control of them. I don't think I'm actually going to gain control of any more enemies. Those guys swing really slow, but boy, do they hurt if they hit you. Oh, I got that guy. Awesome. They're pretty good at my soul catcher combos. Uh, my, my fiance always complains that the, it gets her dizzy when she plays this. I, I can see where that could be. The, the mouse sensitivity is kind of required when you play this game because you've got to be able to move like really quickly. And I kind of twitch game when I play this a lot. I'm so awesome with the state gun, how I keep hitting myself. But the thing is, it hurts me, but I also heal from the life bleacher cards. That's really funny. I was so, I'm so happy that they animated the butt crack of these guys so we can see their butt cracks. Like, thanks guys. Like, I think we all really wanted to see that. So I'd be in a terror card, I was be done. The thing is like, the clearing's still going on. I'm like, okay. Okay. Uh, what's left? I guess I'll get the rest of the gold. And maybe I'll hear the enemy or something. So I never had this happen. I was doing really, really good on this run and for some reason, this one time when I play the stage, it glitches out and it won't spawn the last enemy. So I'm going to leave you with the music a little bit more. And this was Jeff and I'll be talking near the end here. There's the last enemy. So finally we're done with the stage. So I hope you enjoyed watching my favorite level the Opera House minus the glitch there at the end. It's kind of a shame that happened. It's a really fun stage though. So terror card you get is double haste. We're going to be using this a lot later on until we get triple haste. And then also dark soul. So again trauma mode. We got all the armors, all the holy rats, and all the secrets. So both the terror cards are unlocked. This was Jeff with Starcat product.